that will declare He is alive because He is, my dear brothers and sisters. He is alive. Jesus is alive. Jesus has risen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. So, my dear brothers and sisters, for this Sunday, I have just the, I just the, I had the conviction to uh, let us all travel through time, my dear brothers and sisters. Let's, let us all travel through time, and I want to encourage you to just elicit po yung artistic mind natin. Amen? A lot of people will say, I never finish a book in my life. That's a fact. I never, if there is probably a book that I, uh, the only book that I read from cover to cover is the Bible. But name it, I have started reading a lot of books, but I never, I never finish one. No, I never ever finish one. I believe that our youth, our children, I believe that they probably even completed more books than me. But as far as I remember, I never finished reading any book. And a lot of people will say that, um, uh, siguro ako, I would, I would be the type of person that I will enjoy watching the movie more na, rather than reading the books. A lot of people will say, no, you know, if you read the book, it is better because your artistic mind will make you or will bring you to places, will allow you to imagine and will allow you to think. But I, I believe that I don't have that kind of mind. My mind is simple. Amen. So what I want uh, for us to do, my dear brothers and sisters, is reach to those artistic mind. Amen. And according to those scriptures, let's put ourselves in those settings. Amen. So let's start. So I want to invite us to travel through time, my dear brothers and sisters. And like I've said, I know your mind are probably more artistic than me. It would be in your best benefit to just put your mind within those within those frame. It says in there, my dear brothers and sisters, in Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, this is the time of the creation. And we know that from day one, the Lord started to create things. And in Genesis chapter 1, verse 31, it says in there, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning on the sixth day. Amen? And if we continue that, sa continuation, and it's continuation, Genesis 2, 1 to 2, it says in there, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. And on the seventh day, God finished his work that he had done, and he rested on seventh day from all his work that he has done. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. So here, my dear brothers and sisters, it says in there that as God were creating things on the sixth day, God saw everything that he had done and God said it was very good. Amen. It was very good. You can actually, very good can mean, among other things, brilliant, perfect, you name it. Amen. But my dear brothers and sisters, what I just want us to imagine is, you know, our thinking, our thinking, the very good to us is probably trillion, trillion, trillion times than when God says very good. Amen? So when God says it is very good, it is because it is very good. You cannot add up anything on it. Amen? Maybe me, I could say that, oh, this is very good. And some of you probably will say, mm, yes, it's good, but for me, it's not good enough. Or probably some of you will say, mm, yeah, but I believe we can make it better. But if the Lord says, if God declares that all he has done was very good, 
My dear brothers and sisters, you cannot add up anything in it. When God says, it is very good, because He meant it that it is very good. Amen. And we can say, uh, if you imagine that all the, the universe there, the Garden of Eden, and all the landscape in there, do we believe that God created all these things? Glory to God. And I cannot fail to be amazed because, you know, God used all these things by merely speaking them into being. Amen po. By merely speaking them into being. Amen. God just opened His mouth and all these things are turning up. The galaxy, the universe, constellations are turning up. These beautiful landscapes are turning up. If you ever been to the Philippines, come and visit uh, uh, Ifugao or Maligkong or I don't know where is that taken. So come and visit us in the north. Amen. I think that's part of the wonders of the world, I believe. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, no? When God created it, it says, He says that it was very good. Amen? So when He says that it is very good, you cannot add up anything in it. Amen? That's the only reason. That's the reason that God rested on the seventh day. Because if the Lord's creation on the sixth day is not very good, meaning He can still add up something in it, I'm sure He will continue the work on the seventh day. And will rest on an eighth day instead. Amen? But the fact that the creation was perfected on the sixth day, so God rested on the seventh day. Amen? And as a part of this very good creation, as a part of this wonderful creation, my dear brothers and sisters, man had a wonderful relationship with God. If we read through Genesis chapter 2, it says in there that our four parents, Adam and Eve, walked with God. Adam and Eve spoke to God face to face in the Garden of Eden. Amen. God walked with Adam and Eve. God spoke with Adam and Eve. Remember, it was God who placed Adam in the Garden of Eden to be his dwelling. It was God who told Adam to sleep. And when Adam was sleeping, took a bone. Amen. Took a bone from his, uh, his portion and then created that to a female counterpart. Amen. Remember, it was God who told Adam, Adam, here are all the animals. Give name to each and every one of them. Amen. God says that God walks in the garden in the morning breeze. And so Adam and Eve, especially when they sin, realize that here comes God. So my dear brothers and sisters, as a part of that very good and wonderful creation, the most important thing in there is God and man had a perfect relationship. God walked with Adam and Eve. God spoke to Adam and Eve face to face. Amen. But, sadly, someone came in and spoiled that very good, that perfect creation of the Lord. No? In Genesis chapter 3, verse 7 and 21, the Lord says that you can eat everything. You can eat everything in the garden except for two trees. No, except for one tree. And that is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Amen. There is even a tree in there of immortality. The tree of life. No, You know, if Adam and Eve ate the tree of life first, I believe if I am go we are going to believe the scripture, they could have been alive until now. Amen. If they have eaten the tree of life first, they could have been alive until now. But what they have eaten first, 
is the knowledge of good and evil. Is that not that the reason why? You know, without the tree of life, God could have continued to accommodate them in the garden, even if they sinned. You know the reason why that God drove them away from the garden? Because what did God said? Let us drive them away from the garden, lest they will eat of the tree of life. And they will continue to live, and that sin will continue to exist. So my dear brothers and sisters, as part of that wonderful creation, Adam and Eve was able to speak to God. But like I've said, the devil came. And we know the story. The devil in the form of that serpent tempted Eve. Don't look at your wives. <laughs> no. The devil tempted Eve to eat of that fruits. And Eve brought that as well to her husband, Adam. And it says in there, my dear brothers and sisters, as soon as they have eaten it, their knowledge were open. Their understanding were open. And they realized, what they have realized, my dear brothers and sisters, is their nakedness. They realized their nakedness. And they felt exposed. Is that not what sin brings to us? Di po ba pag nagkakasala tayo, ano po yung nararamdaman natin pag nagkakasala tayo? Even knowing that we did that sin in secret, even knowing na no one else knew about that sin, what does that feeling brings us? We feel exposed, isn't it? Nandun yung self-guilt, nandun na nahihiya tayo. Wala namang nakakaalam. Ginawa mo lang naman yung kasalanan na yun in secret. But why is it that you feel exposed? Why is it that you feel vulnerable? Why is it that nahihiya ka? So pretty much the same thing with Adam and Eve. Well, they thought they did that in secret. Now they knew that God is all-knowing. They thought that they did that in secret and they were exposed, their nakedness were exposed. And what they have done, what they have done, church? What they have done, church? They gather leaves. They gather leaves and sow it to cover their nakedness. Dito makikita natin, here we can see one sin, if it's not checked, will give birth to another sin. No? So my dear brothers and sisters, I encourage you that if you sin, no, this is the beauty of the glory of the Lord. Because if we sin, The moment that we run to the Lord and ask for the Lord's forgiveness, the Lord says, I am just, I am just and faithful God, ready to forgive you your sins. Amen. Because, you know, if we try to, if we try to um, accommodate a sin, that sin will give birth to another sin. And this is an example of that. The original sin was disobedience to the Lord by eating that fruits. Amen. And what was the sin that was uh, that led through that? Their sin of self righteousness. They were exposed. They feel naked. And now, instead of running to God and say that God, we fail you. God, we disobeyed you. God, we eat that these fruits that we should not have done. Forgive us. Now, what they have done is they try to make amends of what they have done by their self-righteousness will try to remedy what we have done though so they sew a leaves out of fig tree amen remember judas that's what judas did amen si judas po ipinagkanulo niya ang ating panginoong hiso kristo well you we know the bible said that he felt sorry about it he felt sorry about it and he even uh, so depressed about that sin. But my dear brothers and sisters, being sorry about your sin and repentance is two different things. What Judas could have done is repented to the Lord. 
But no, he felt sorry about it. He felt guilt about it. And what he has done? Self-righteousness. Judah said, oh, kung mamamatay ako, if I will give my life, if I will take my life as well. So my dear brothers and sisters, self-righteousness. No? So the lesson there is, a sin will give birth to another. So the encouragement is, the moment that we sin, no, that's the reason why that the Lord is really amazed about King David. Because King David is far from perfect. Maybe kung tumayo ka alongside King David, maybe King David is more a sinful man than you are. But what King David do is, the moment that he realized that he sinned, he runs to the Lord and he runs crying to the Lord and he runs asking, pleading for the Lord's forgiveness and continue to praise and worship the Lord. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. What did the Lord do? The Lord found out what they have done. This is what I meant that their self-righteousness creating a cloth out of that leaves does not suffice. Because if it does, God wouldn't have done anything. But what did God do, my dear brothers and sisters? God made clothes. Hang on, Lord. Why do you have to make clothes for them? They already have clothing, remember? They have already made leaves to clothe themselves. But why did God make clothes? The, 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 uh, verse 21 says that the Lord made cloth out of animal skin for Adam and his wife and cloth them. Amen po. But glory to God in the highest. You know, this is what I have realized reading this, uh, contemplating this message this Easter. That act, my dear brothers and sisters, when the Lord gave them a cloth out of animal skin, that is the first part of the Lord's redemption plan. That is the Lord showing His true nature. That is the Lord showing His true love to humanity, my dear brothers and sisters. Because you know what? Say for example, here I am. I am God and I am a holy God. You know what does a holy God means? A holy God means if you need to be praised, you will be praised. If you need to be judged, you will be judged. That is a holy God means. And the Bible, the law says that everyone who sinned, what is the penalty of that sin? Death. And here is God. He knows that these people sin, Adam and Eve sin, and the penalty of their sin is death. Amen. But, you know, we thought that God just gave them clothing, but hang on. Just imagine, my dear brothers and sisters, in order for God to give them a clothing of animal skin, God has to kill an animal. Amen. In order for God to give them a clothing out of animal, God has to kill an animal. And when an animal is being killed, the blood of that animal is being shed. So my dear brothers and sisters, God did not just give them clothing to cover their nakedness, but God put an animal that died in place of them, that the blood of that animal will be shed in order to cover their sin, in order to spare their life. Amen, my dear brothers and sisters. It's not written in the Bible, but I have a conviction that you know what the Lord's choice of animal? I believe it's going to be a lamb. I believe it's going to be a lamb. I believe it's going to be a lamb skin that the Lord gave to Adam and Eve. So my dear brothers and sisters, Jan Palang is the Lord without Adam and Eve asking the Lord. The Lord has already gave his love. Without Adam and Eve coming to the Lord and say, Lord, save us. 
Lord, forgive us. They are, they are already in enmity with the Lord. But the Lord gave a sacrifice of an animal in their place to cover their sins, to forgive their sins, to take their place of death instead of them. God is in wrath. God has to punish. Amen. But it says in there that everything, every sin needs to be purified by blood. Because without the shedding of the blood, there is going to be no forgiveness of that sin. If God did not kill an animal in the garden and give that clothing to them, my dear brothers and sisters, they would have died there and then. Amen? So I believe that that act of God in the Garden of Eden is actually the initial part, initial stage of the Lord's redemption plan. Amen? The Lord's redemption plan. And Jesus, God says in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, that this is now the time when the Lord was telling of all the culprits, all that were involved in that crime. That's Adam, that's Eve, but most importantly, the devil. And what did God said? I will put enmity between you and the woman. Amen. And between your seed and her seed. Amen. The seed of the woman will crush your head, sabi niya kay Satan, and Satan, you will strike his heel, which is fatal. If you are beaten in your heel or if someone crush you in your head. But my dear brothers and sisters, dito pa lang, in there alone, God is already telling His plan that there is going to be a virgin's birth. Amen. Scientists, by you, uh, chemical science, we know that in the time of conception, sino po ang nagpupunla ng seed? Sino ang nagpupunla ng seed? It's the man. Amen? It's the man. Diba? Amen? No? Kaon, may mga anak tayong lahat. No? Sino po ang nagpupunla? It's the man. But in the Garden of Eden, God said, yung punla ng babae will crush your head. It's always going to be a virgin's birth, mga kapatid. It is going to be a virgin's birth. And there alone, sinabi na ng Panginoon yung kanyang plano. Amen. Sinabi na ng Panginoon ang kanyang plano that it is going to be a virgin's birth. This final redemption plan is going to be a virgin's birth. And that will come from the offspring, from the seed of the woman. That throughout the generation, pagkakaroon ng clashing. Amen. But, you know, Satan is not all-knowing. Satan's knowledge is limited. Amen. That is the reason why that, what did Satan do? He waged war. He waged war. He waged war. Akala niya, he thought that, remember, when Adam and Eve had children, it was Cain and Abel. And Satan again entered the heart and the mind of Cain to murder his brother Abel. Because Satan thought that this is the seed that the Lord is talking about. Amen. I could have either enticed one to sin or I could have either put one to death. So Satan said, oh, I'm victorious. Little did he know that that is not the plan. That is the reason why that he corrupted humanity. Remember at its peak during the time of Noah, humanity was corrupted. Satan sent forth fallen angels and they intermarry with women, with the, the, the daughters of men. What is the purpose of Satan in doing that? My dear brothers and sisters, to destroy that lineage, to destroy that lineage upang in the, the mind of Satan, 
each and every living humans, eh meron silang dugong fallen angel. But the Bible clearly tells us that God preserves a family. God preserves a family, not just an upright to the Lord, but na walang fallen, walang nephilim sa kanilang blood, sa kanilang DNA. Amen. And that's the reason why. And that's the reason why that during the time of Israelites, that is the reason why the enemy used Pharaoh to enslave the people of Israel for 400 years. That is all the time, my dear brothers and sisters. Amen po. So kung makikita natin dito, my dear brothers and sisters, in your far right corner, there, that is the time in Genesis where God sacrificed an animal to cover the sin of Adam and Eve so that they will not die. And God said that in the future, there is going to be a virgin birth, my final redemption plan, and that is in the far right, uh, far left side. Amen. But even in between, the Lord gave us a way. The Lord provided us a way on how our sins will be covered. Because remember, again, the wages of sin is death. Amen. On how our sins will be forgiven. That's where these animal sacrifices came from. Amen po. As sabi niya doon sa Leviticus 4.29 that the way of sacrificing animal, that's the reason why you choose an animal that is without blemish, without a spot, perfect mga kapatid. Amen. Pumili kayo ng animal na perfecto, walang problema. Because you bring that animal as your sin offering. Ang gagawin mo sa animal na yan, you go into the door of the tent of meeting or the door in the temple when it was already erected in Jerusalem. You pray for the animal. Hold the head of the animal. And when you prayed for it, there is going to be an exchange. The righteousness of the animal will be transferred to you and your sin will be transferred to the animal. So after that, kill the animal. Now, the law has been fulfilled. That all sin will be redeemed by washing of the blood. Amen. But glory to God now, because it's not the blood of the person in sin, but it is the blood of that animal being sacrificed because of that transference. So imagine, namulot ka lang dyan. This is the reason why that Jesus, you know, Jesus destroyed the marketplace in the temple. You know, the purpose of these people selling animals in the temple is, yes, one, they made the temple as a marketplace, but second, animal sacrifice, my dear brothers and sisters, should be hindi lang basta-basta. But we can see that they are selling animals in there. And when you are selling animals in the temple, corruption will be there. Sino ba ang seller na magsasabi na hindi perfecto ang kanyang itinitinda? Sino ba ang seller na magsasabi na uh, na may karamdaman ang kanyang tinitinda? Amen. Wala. Lahat ng seller sasabihin, ay maganda yan. Matamis yan. Tikman mo, pero bago mo tikman, bayaran mo muna. Amen. So all those sellers, that's the reason why that even animal sacrifices in the temple, they became cheap. Amen. So my dear brothers and sisters, no? Dito natin makikita yung love ng Panginoon that from that initial first step of redemption through Adam and Eve in Genesis and then yung final redemption plan para sa ating lahat in between, the Lord still provide a means to cover our sins. Amen po. No? But now, we are here. We are here now. Amen po. We are here where Jesus celebrated, uh, where Jesus sacrificed himself. No, First Peter chapter 1, verse 18 to 21, it says in there that knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, 
but with the precious blood of Jesus Christ, that like that of a lamb without blemish or spot. He was foreknown. Pay attention. He was foreknown even before the foundation of the world is. No, He was manifest in the last time for the sake of you, who through Him are believers in God, who raised Him from the dead and gave Him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. So my dear brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ was the one foretold in the Garden of Eden, the seed of the woman that will crush the head of Satan. Amen po. And glory to God because Jesus purchased us, ransomed us, my dear brothers and sisters, not with silver and gold because otherwise the enemy will say, they are not ransomed, they are not forgiven because they ransomed them with silver and gold because the Bible says that everything has to be ransomed with the blood. And Jesus willingly give, us, give up his life in the cross. John 1.29, this is John the Baptist when he was baptizing in the river Jordan. And what did John the Baptist, how did John the Baptist describe Christ? Look, the Lamb of God is coming who takes away the sins of the world. Amen. Luke 19.21, in Jesus we have the redemption through His blood, through the forgiveness of sins and in accordance with the riches of grace. So dito natin makikita mga kapatid. Amen. Dito natin makikita, if balikan natin yan, no? dito natin makikita that from final, from the first initial redemption plan, and there is that animal sacrifices for atonement, which are very temporary up until the perfect time of the Messiah will come. So we are now living on that Jesus Christ's sacrifices. Amen po. Glory to God dahil hindi na natin kailangang maghanap pa ng mga animal na isakripisyo. Amen. I don't know, sa Pilipinas, meron pa rin mga ganong practices, di po ba? Where they na alay-alay na sinasabi. But glory to God because we have that one true, ultimate, and perfect sacrifice. And that is the life of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen po. I just want to read this Hebrews chapter 10. Wala po dyan. And I will just quickly read it. Um, the law is only a shadow of the good things that are coming. Not the realities themselves. For this reason, it can never be the same sacrifices repeated endlessly year after year. Make perfect those who draw near to worship. If it could, they, they not have stopped being offered, for the worshippers would have been cleansed one for all and would no longer have felt guilt for their sins. But those sacrifices are an annual remembrance of sin because it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. No? Atonement, my dear brothers and sisters, meaning it does not, it's not taking away of your sin. It's just covering your sin. That is the reason why that these people of old, when they give sacrifice, it's an annual event. Taon-taon. E paano kung nagkasakit ka during that time eh? hindi ka nakapag-sacrifice. Ibig sabihin, yung kasalanan mo, next year mo na naman maihihingi ng tawad. No? But it says in there, my dear brothers and sisters, no? Those sacrifices are annual remember, rem reminder of sin because it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goat to take away sins. So tinatakpan lang po niya tinatakpan lang po niya sa susunod na taon na naman, mag-o-offer ka na naman para matakpan na naman. But glory to God in the highest because Christ's blood that shed in the Calvary ay hindi lang po pantakip ng ating kasalanan. Bagkus mga kapatid, pantanggal ng ating kasalanan. Amen po. The Lord said that even I, 
for my name's sake, I'm willing to blot out your sins. Amen. Or it actually it says furthermore in there that I will remember your sins no more. Parang ibig sabihin hindi ka nagkasala. Imagine, wow. I believe na sometimes tayo na lang yung naglilimit sa atin and that's what the enemy uses is the conscience. Amen. When the Lord says that whoever the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. Yes, makasalanan ka. Pero kung tunay nga namang nagpakumbaba ka at ihilingi mo ng Panginoon ng tawad yung kasalanan mo na yan. Mga kapatid, the Lord has forgiven that. Huwag mo nang balik-balikan pa. Amen. Huwag mo nang balik-balikan pa. It will be good to remember it and to testify about it just to prove how the love and the, how the power of the Lord is. Amen. But do not dwell in it any longer. Amen. Because if you continue to, if you ask for forgiveness and you continue to dwell in it, that means that the power of the blood of Jesus is hindi siya effective. But we know that that's not the case. Amen po. No? So if you sin, and if you ask for forgiveness, if you truly ask for forgiveness, wala na po yan. Wala na po yan. Amen. Romans 5, 8, 11.